You could say this is a companion painting to the last one I did. I've been working on, trying to work on getting some more character into my sky. And for some reason, I don't quite know where I got the idea from, I decided to leave a vertical streak of sunlight. As you can see there. That's Payne's Blue Grey, Daniel Smith. Not quite as granulating as uh, the mixtures I was using previously. Quite a lot of messing about to get the paint to go where I want it to go and not go where I don't want it to go. The brush I'm using there is, don't know what size it is, number 12 possibly. Red Dot Synthetic from Rosemary and Company. Which has been designed to emulate Sable as closely as possible. I'm certainly very happy with all of the brushes I've got from, from them. As you can see, varying, having the painting resting on my little wooden block to get the colour to run down towards me, or having it flat so that the paint doesn't move quite as much. And then I was just picking up the paint there on a, on a damp brush. And again, deciding it's run far enough. Liberal use of the spray bottle, as you can see. So having partially dried off, still fairly damp, which is why those trees have a very soft edge to them. Except for the one to the left, and then I like the fact that that's a little bit sharper. So I'm starting with the uh, natural sienna, mixing um, a darker version of the green mixed with the um, Payne's blue-grey. As you can see that area of the sky has dried so the edges are quite sharp. As well as spraying the bottom there, I've also, you can see the, the light reflecting, I've um, 
spread the top of the trees ever so slightly just to loosen the edges very slightly continuing to mix darker versions of the essentially the same colour creating small variations, a little bit more of the yellow towards the left hand edge there as you can see and an even darker version of essentially the same colour interesting how that patch of paper on the left there has not quite dried so you get the soft edges and yet right next to it it has dried it's all part of the fun and also there on the right uh, not not quite dry either always try and make a slightly darker colour towards the bottom of the trees and bushes I've seen me paint tree trunks before, so don't need to see me do it again. I've that, or I forgot to switch the camera on. Same there, just um, filling the area. You can see towards the bottom of the main trunks there, the, the paper's not quite dried, so you get a slight frayed edge to the trees, which I don't mind. Looks like there's maybe moss growing on them or something. Again using the flat the flat of the brush to create a broke, broken texture for the, for the floor or the ground. Again looking to create contrast with darker shades against the white, the, the pale background. I'm looking at the streak of light which I've left in the sky and thinking that I'd really like it. I can't quite decide whether it's Thor, the god of thunder, on his way down, or whether maybe E.T. has phoned home and that's his ride coming to pick him up. Maybe you could let me know what you think it is. It's a number two rigger brush. I 
couldn't quite decide how much I wanted to fill that left hand area with with the trees. I also have a habit, as you can see there, of initially creating very even spacing. I'm not quite sure why I do that. It does, on the one hand, give a certain amount of rhythm. But on the other hand, perhaps it looks a bit artificial. Anyway, we can fix that shortly. Always a good idea to have something leaving the plane of the picture. A branch on the right. The trees have so far been painted with a pointed, um, pointed brush, but that is a flat. You can load lots of paint onto it, so you can paint um, a fairly thick trunk there all the way to the top without running out of paint. Same again. As you can see, holding it edge on and rotating it ever so slightly to give you um, thicker at the bottom and then rotating it back, back towards being um, completely parallel to the sides of the page. You can see there what I'm doing with how I'm using the brush there. That's about as far as I can go with that brush, so we'll just finish, finish off with the rigger. And another one. Same, same procedure. And one in there for good measure. Not quite sure, I wasn't quite sure at that point how much I wanted to take the branches into the um, the lightest part of the sky. I used to be indecisive, but now I'm not so sure. I have a dead branch on the floor of the forest for, uh, for a change. And again using the ruling pen, which as you can see, deposited a blob of paint because the the blades of the nib were too far apart. Trying not to just paint straight branches, trying to give them a bit of character, adjusting the width there. And again, you don't really need to see me spending 20 minutes painting tiny branches, both on the left and the right, and deciding that on the left there it was all looking a bit, um, a bit dead to be honest. So putting some foliage, fairly transparent version of the same green color for the rest of the trees. Um, liberally spreading a diluted version of of the tree colour of the of the of the leaves. And same process on the right.
venturing out into the sky a little bit. As I said earlier, I'm not quite sure why I decided to treat the sky the way I have done, but uh, I really like it, so I might do something similar again. Lay it flat to, to let it dry, or so that the paint doesn't move too far. just gradually building up um, intensity of colour for the trees which are nearest again to create a feeling of depth so there's the finished one if you like it give me a like and subscribe if you want to thanks for watching